Hi guys, I'm Addie with ID8 TV, and I'm here with Paul Jenkins, writer. Did you illustrate this stuff too? Uh, no, I'm also a writer, a director. Um, I'm a producer. I work in animation, television as well. So. Awesome. Okay, so earlier I was walking by, like I told you, and I heard one of your guys talking about the book. This this book alters, and um, it's about a transgender superhero. Being that you are a heterosexual white. British man, how did you even come up with the character, the storyline, the concept right. of a transgender superhero? Well, the, the point of Alters is that it's um, very much about people with disadvantage. So it's not necessarily a transgender or LGBT book. Um, it happens to have a trans character in it. Um, one of the things that you can look at with superheroes, and especially superhero secret identities, is that it's very much a metaphor for some of the transgender experience, I suppose, you know? Um, but really what was important was to go and research it. And the way that I researched it was I got a lot of people who were basically uh, consultants with me, and they read every script, they were trans people, and they read every script and gave me notes and told me anecdotes and really helped me. Um, so we as creative people we can't really just write what we are we have to write what we learn about or write what we see um, and then the other thing about alters is even though she's the prominent character chalice um, it's very important to understand that it's actually also about homelessness and physical issues mental health issues it's about people with disadvantage that get a big advantage in, in the form of the superpower and so with those different concepts that are in in this book or in any future books. Is there pieces of you in these stories? Yeah, so uh, it, was, it was very interesting to learn, you know, about things that there are not pieces of me in, you know. Um, but yes, uh, when we first uh, presented the book, um, I asked my mum about it. Uh, but I was raised um, by a single mum. My dad left my family when I was five years old. We, we, we lived in poverty a lot. And um, my mum is bi. And so she took a long time to be able to explain to the family that she was bisexual and we lived in that environment my brother and i knew that as relatively the the way that our family was um but at time you know we we went through a lot of poverty and we have a character in alters who's homeless and in fact i had been homeless a couple of times in my life uh, when i was younger um, we certainly understood deprivation and poverty. And so, yeah, we put it into the book. Um, there's also a, cha a character who's a shape changer and he breaks his neck and he's quadriplegic. And um, he, he is told, you know, you can, you can change one more time and you'll live for one month, it'll kill you. Or you can be quadriplegic for 20, years, 20 or 30 years because we wouldn't know what we would do. And so that really highlights how hard it would be um, to be quadriplegic. Uh, there's another story that we, we have in the future about someone who deals with vertigo. Because silent things like vertigo or um, you know, agoraphobia or things that we don't really see, you know, deafness, all of these could be someone we give a hyper advantage to. Um, so yeah, I broke my neck years ago playing soccer and um, I dealt with vertigo really badly. So some of it is me, but it doesn't have to be me as long as I can research it. You know? And that's, and that's what you're saying, that's the goal, and that should be the goal of a writer, is to not only write from their perspective, but to go out and search, research, find out, and kind of see through the eyes of another person that they have no relation to. Yeah, you know, one of the things that happened with, uh, with Alters, um, we were, it's been very gratifying. We've had people come up to us at shows. Uh, my favorite one was when we went to do the first issue. Uh, we did a signing in North Carolina, and at the time there was that bathroom bill on the books. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't that happy about that. I thought that was uh, kind of crappy. Yeah. And what I did was um, we did a cover where Chalice, the main character, is actually on the front, and she's standing in front of two bathrooms. One's male, one's female, but they have superhero capes on. And then there are all these other versions, aliens and all that. And she's like, I have no idea what to do, right? Yeah. So when we did that signing, we had a group of students come and there was one uh, little girl, she was trans. And she came up to me about five times and she said, with tears in her eyes, she said, please, 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 this is my hero. I want to keep it please promise me that you'll keep doing it. And she must have come back to me about five times, said, you promise, you promise me that we'll keep doing it. And that had a profound effect on me because, because I've heard from a few people that have loved the book that this is their character. So, so Alters is not an LGBT book. 
it happens to have a character in it that is trans. And I think one of its triumphs was that when we did the second series, we barely mentioned that she was trans. So at that point, she was a hero and she was the main character, but we didn't have to talk about her being trans, which is kind of the point. And I think that exactly that is the point. I, I've seen LGBT actors saying, I'm not, I don't want to be an LGBT actor or a trans actor. I just want to be, I'm an actor who happens to be trans. And I think that, and I think that that is exactly what you're saying you're doing with your book is that it just hap it happens to be a superhero who is a trans. It was, it was a great, it was a great conceit. It was a great metaphor for, for secret identities, I suppose, you know, but then again, uh, think about this. Uh, when we think about people who are marginalized and people who are dealing with disadvantage, it's, it's as if we say, well, that's not us. Well, that's not true because, uh, you know, you may have somebody who's uh, passed away from Alzheimer's disease or who has cancer, who has a mental health issue in your family. I virtually guarantee that every family has some element of that in it. Certainly my grandmother died of Alzheimer's. And so seeing someone disappear as a human being of, you know, what you know them for before, you know, five years before they die is excruciating. And everybody deals with that, and that's what Alters deals with. So it's actually a, a very straightforward book about families and all of us. Yes. So many, so much, so, so dynamic. I love this. Thank you. It literally stopped me in my tracks today. This is amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you'd like any, everybody else to know about your book, yourself, your writing? Um, well, you know, I mean, I have now arrived at a point, you know, I, I did mainstream for a long time and I'm still okay, okay with doing mainstream kind of comics like Batman and Spider-Man. I, obviously, I wrote the origin of Wolverine that people know me for. Um, but really, the biggest thing for me now is uh, all ages because I'm a dad. I have a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old. And when I say all ages, I want it to be for a guy who's 65 and a little girl who's 5 to walk up and pick up the books that I do right now and have equal enjoyment you know so that's the kind of book that I concentrate on yeah, I love that thank you so much